come back for game number one, that one versus Guts. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. When I say quick, quick break, I mean quick. Damn One versus Guts is game number one. And these two teams looking in their own regions in both Korea and in Japan to grow beyond just one of the top there, the top two team in the region. They want to go beyond it. Question is, how will they fare against one another? And yet another classic of Japan versus Korea. Let's talk about the overarching story in this Fluke and Ace. What do you think stands out for this game? For me, I think it's... It's a really important game for both teams here because, as as Em touched on earlier, these are both now middle table, very close in position to each other, and I think that's going to remain the case until the end of the stage. So these are points that could be directly taken away from uh, a rival come the end of the stage. You know, this could be um, the the game that opens the gulf between the two teams. And for me, Dan one, there are still questions to be answered. We've seen great performances. We've seen sort of you know poorer. Performances performances they're still trying to find exactly where they sit for consistency um, and guts guts have they've had a tough start i think they've had some tough teams to play but it's it's going to be a fascinating game yeah i think that's the main thing about it is Dan one they're still an unknown entity because we've seen them have some tough days we've seen them be able to put in some big rounds and big moments but i still think they're developing they're still defining who they are in what is a very aggressive league and they're up against one of the most aggressive teams today sure we've sort of had this powerful you know front runner in terms of being able to put bodies down um in the role of yes but they're on a plus 16 the rest of the players you know it's closer to a kind of middling performance we got to see what they're like against a team that is across the board aggressive like guts can be because if they find themselves a little bit concerned today that turns into round losses. Back today, especially against a team like Guts that we know is good, just is not number one in Japan right now. That was kind of solidified. You talked about earlier between them and uh, Cyclops in our last play days. So why don't we talk about our rosters? So pull up Dan one first, our Korean team. They come in untested, as we all said. But man, they're actually performing pretty well, way better than T1. That's for sure. I think that's it as well. As as I said, like it's not that the rest of the team aren't to the level. If they were, we'd have another T1 story. They're still finding themselves. They're still setting themselves up. It's just Yas is being so standout at the minute that you do wonder, you know, is it like a situation where you had with old school BDS where if you have Yas not showing up, how does the team fare? How do things work for them and what doesn't quite find its way? Okay. Their win was against Fnatic. Their win was against a team that has struggled recently inside this league and inside this sort of performance. They've been able to pull good games against C9 and Talon, regardless of how the results came through. This is going to be one of those games, I said, it will sort of define them. It will define their role and I think how they're going to be playing moving forward. All right, that is Damon. Let us take a look at their opponents then guts gaming our japanese squad currently rated number two in japan can they make a good showing today is well it's for me it's now or never in terms of this stage as i said earlier if they lose this one they are heading for a bottom half finish i think that's almost assured but Looking at the players, looking at the roster, we've got some big names on there. We've got big names that maybe need to deliver a little bit more. You know, people like Crazy Papillon, he's been around the scene for a long time. Putting some, you know, some support play in there, putting the diffuser down. But the big story for me with these players is the gunfights. If we look across the board there, you can see very few positive KDs, or at least not sort of strongly positive. It's maybe plus one, plus two. And when we look at players like Yas on the side of Damwon, who is, I think, about plus 16 at the minute, it, that could be a really telling factor for them today. If they're not going in and winning those gunfights, somebody like Yas or Kurt could just run away with the game. So we'll have to see how that goes. Now, looking at the team card there, we've got uh, a win rate of only 
percent, so one out of three so far, which came against Talon. But don't mm. put too much stock in that. They have played um, both Kag and Cloud9, so they've played against good teams as well that they've struggled with. We can see when they have got the win against Talon, they've done it emphatically, coming in with a nice four rounds. It's not been stretched to overtime. They've come in and shown that they meant business and got the job done. It's just a question of which guts do we get today? Do we get the guts mm. that we saw against Talon, or do we get the one that gets rolled against Kag? It's it's a mixed bag from them, and much the same as Dan won. It's, it's for me, probably one of the most difficult games of the day to predict. There's always something like a couple games in each um, eight back north day where you look at it and you're like, huh, I actually don't know because we've only had three play days, as you both have mentioned. It's not enough to have information on these on these teams, especially when there's Japan and Korea that are mixing together all the time in APAC North, and you can't always rely on the regional games that they have in Japan League or in the Korean League. So there's that to explore today. How about, though, after we've taken a look at their roster, see the head-to-head. Now, you guys picked one player out of each one of these two teams. I'm excited to see who it is. It's Coated the Goated, as Des would call him, and Light. So what are we trying to compare here in roles and in numbers, M? support structure and where it sort of falls down in the line of things obviously when you're looking at a team that has a lot of possibility for aggression and how things kind of go as Des said before it sometimes falls back to the back line of coated to try to be goated and stick in and stand up for the possibility of a win he's doing okay obviously we can see in the stats comparison here he's finding himself in a lot of situations and finding himself sometimes maybe thrust into the role of okay i've got to step up here regardless of the role that he's playing whether it's the flank watch whether it's a little bit of hard destruction whether it's bringing the maestro and the big elder on the defense either way he's adapting well and i think the more pressure that's put on him is something that isn't if anything gonna potentially strengthen the team in the long run Looking across the table at light there, we can see again bringing those supportive operators, Smoke, Ace, but he's one of the few on the team that's, or he's got one of the stronger positive KDs with a plus four, and that sort of starts defining the, the problems for Guts with me. No plants, but getting a few kills and getting a, a positive there. I think for me, they need to be focusing the roles a little bit more. You know, let Light think about what he should be doing on support whilst others are going off and getting those kills and really taking those gunfights confidently. But Light has had a great start so far. He's, you know, he's sitting positive, he's doing well, but I think maybe just a bit more definition within the team would help him and help the others. All right, so with our apparent mic stuff being fixed as we speak, we should be ready to talk about the map. I'm very excited about this. Our lobby is pretty much set, so show me the money. Map ban, seven map pool down to one, and there's Guts banning Cafe Dostoevsky to take us to Villa. Very technical. I think this makes a lot of sense when you're going up against Damwon in this, and they're starting off on the attack as Damwon has picked defense. Does this make sense from a statistical and from a playstyle point of view? Go ahead. Yeah, yes. I think those two maps that you're kind of up there, obviously we've seen Damwon come off the back of a loss on Villa. They haven't had the best time on it recently, and it was against Talon, which is obviously the team that was dispatched, I believe, off the top of my head. Now as I quickly scroll through, uh, Liquipedia, and, uh, oh, that was, things are updating and changing on it. Either way, we've seen <laughs> them on it, and it wasn't, it was C9, sorry, uh, C9 in week two, um, on player two, and it was 7-4. It wasn't as convincing, because it was a good start for them, and then it sort of fell apart on the defense, so you're hoping that their structural integrity is a little bit better today. I think Villa could be um, an interesting map for this one because, <coughs> sorry, I've already sure. mentioned the the gunfights that we begin, you know, that we maybe will see dominating things here. If they come in the form of entry kills, it can gain you a lot of space on Villa. It's a big map, and if you can come in and get that early advantage, it could be decisive. All right, it seems like we're still waiting for one more player trying to restart his computer to get back into the game. ASAP. So let's talk about more particular play style. Guts versus Dam one. And how do these play styles kind of bump against one another on a map like Villa? And why is it the right map? Why is it the map that would slow down Dam one? What are your thoughts? Open question. I think it's because, as I said before, they, they've struggled sometimes when they need to, I guess, lock in they seem like they're still trying to 
scramble to positions and scramble to understand their opponents. Sure, it's a development league. It's obviously had a huge amount of growth since its you know, creation, which was only a year ago at this point. But that's a year of guts getting facilitated and getting familiarized with playing against you know various opponents and you have tastes of those but as we've seen from very big arguments on twitter you don't really know how you fare until you face opponents from other regions and until you face them with frequency this is their first true experience at that. This is their first true time of week in, week out. They're potentially placing someone from another region, from another playstyle, from another game. And it means you've got to keep leveling up your game, which they're still learning how to do. It's how quick they can do it. Maybe there's a certain advertisement that they could look at to level up their play sometimes. that you guys played Ace, you still think very quickly because their lobby is ready. Guts beats Dam one today. Um, it's a really tough one to call. I honestly think if I have to back to the wall, I think Dan won't possibly pull it out with that superior KD and gunfights. I think they'll find themselves some cracks and take advantage of it. All right, our lobby's ready. So Fluke Ace, thank you so, so very much for your introduction to this game. This is number one, Dan Juan versus Guts. And we're going to go to wonderful Tuscany to Villa. And it's Jess and Dance that'll take us through the game. All yours, enjoy. Thank you very much, Milos. And I believe the desk did discuss very, very briefly there, Jess, that we've seen down one already go to this map in week two against Cloud9. And against Cloud9, a team that dumps to pretty much everyone they come up against, I wasn't massively disappointed with Dan One. I thought they had a pretty good game. There were a couple of rounds that involved things like TKs that really helped throw the game away for them. <laughs> and the second half was definitely Cloud Nines. But in the first half, I quite liked what I, like what I saw out of Dan One. This feels like a comfortable map for them. They're coming up against Guts, who, as the desk also alluded to, are still kind of figuring things out a year on. It's a really tough game to call at the face value of it, I think. You say it's tough, I say no. Even with the whole Cloud9 win, I think that just propels so much more confidence inside of me. I'm sitting here going, you can beat Cloud9 on Villa, then you can beat other teams on Villa. You obviously have the capacity to do so. You obviously understand the map quite well, enough to be able to get multi-kills consistently. <laughs> I'm looking I mean, through yes. the thread here. Go not, ahead, go not ahead. To, not, not to rip the kind of tablecloth from underneath you, but they lost to C974. Uh, I'm talking about uh, just, uh, just uh, March 30th, sorry. My apologies here. I'm talking about March 30th. Yeah. What are you? What are you? What are you talking about? We're talking about two different matches here. You said you said they beat Cloud Nine Seven Four. Oh, the recent no, one six. outside of the this, right? One, the Korean. I Hello, see. The big, it's the because big I spoke about week two. I get it. Yeah, you know what? I will put you know what, an asterisk on that though. They did, C9 did play. I need you to be quiet for one right. second Go on because then, there's an ash ban. There's an ash ban. Got to stop you right there in your tracks because there will be no ash main, no brain in this. Rushing and crouch walking, whatever you want to call it. It is gone. Now, the reason I had to highlight that is you go back and you have a look and you're like, who was the one that was running around, running on the ash? It was Rin. Who runs around on the Jaeger, absolutely gunning people? It was Rin. Rin has a really big impact for Damwon. I just don't know whether that was the right ban. Out of all the bands you could done, was that it? Was that the most impactful? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Yeah, no, not really. I don't think so. I think yeah. well, the one band that really kind of interested me was actually the uh, Dokebi coming out because that was what I believe yeah. Damwon used in their game last week quite effectively. In fact, no, it was Talon on the attack who used it really effectively against Damwon. And they're saying, man, this really screwed us up. Our Romans couldn't do anything. They tried Lion, yeah. I believe, for the first round and then played KB for the next five. So they know that clearly it is damaging against them and say, look, we don't want any team to see what happened to us on Chalet last week and think they should copy the same sort of thing. Get it off the board. Don't even leave the option open and we'll see how we go from there. Well, I mean, Guts has run Dokubi on this map specifically. They don't have a lot of rounds of compositions where Dokubi is there, but that's mm -hmm. also because they haven't played it enough for me to have enough statistical no. analysis. So for overall, they do play it on this map, so it's a safe ban. It's not awful. Something that's not going to be safe is if you're coming over towards red or you're coming over the AV door, there is going to be an entire wall half shotgun open left, right, and center. One of the things I want us to be really careful, especially if you're sitting here viewing this right now, Rin in Shiko spot on red. Now they're putting a bear 
actually at the bottom of it. They've got also barbed wire there. And oftentimes teams will also put a double or even a triple ADS on the stairs so that the Jaeger player can sit there. I'm not sure whether Renge is still setting up and then, you know, they'll go sit on those stairs and play it or get some drones early on. But that's the Jaeger spot nine times out of ten. It'll be interesting to see how Rin holds this as they start placing down the ADSs. Uh, every single map feels like it has a Shiko spot brewing these days where he it holds does. somewhere not super aggressive. It's more of a perimeter position, like around the sites themselves rather than the other side of the map. But it's enough that he has the support of things like utility and can then back the site if things do start going south. And as you say, Rin is looking to hold that spot on the red stairs. This has kind of become the APAC method so far for defensive teams is not going for like full on outwardly committed roams, i.e. everyone off site mm -hmm. that we sometimes saw from some teams last, last year. What you are instead seeing is them looking to get one or two kills early on and get back to site. Disrupt the attackers, remove that crucial utility that makes them so powerful. And a number of teams have really stumbled when they lose the opening operator or two. I think that's probably what you might see coming out of DWG here as the rounds progress, especially with Katsang doing what he's doing here and getting pretty aggressive from underneath. Wow. C4 already pre-placed and knows there's likely someone pushing in from mud at the same time. So probably gonna have to back away here. You know, last time Down One played this one out, they actually managed to hold on to Red, but they got a grenaded from Wolf being opened up multiple times. You know what they've done? They have multiple ADSs and they've brought the, the Wamai to bring the magnets as well. I mean, there is so much to protect Rin on Red that if Rin goes down without it, any of those even being cooked, it is a huge waste. Wolf gets opened up from connector window and as a result, they've got the line of sight that they need, but they are hunting. Cat saying down below, they know there was a pre-play C4. It won't connect with anyone but they're hoping they can get that player so no damage can be done vertically at the very least. And with the Jack on the Nomad, that's very much a clear ground. Hold it with the air jab and away you go from there. Grenade sings in and still not going to win. Forced to peek the top of the stairs as the grenade sat behind him. And JJ collects Rin, finds a second onto Woogie pretty much immediately afterwards. The man went down for a brief second, but then finished off. And even with the Rome coming in from Katsang here, it's Yas and Koti, the last two, the two fraggers that we have seen really shine for this team this season so far, who have now got it all to do on site. Katsang has rejoined them. This has kind of come back to bite DWG a little bit, I think, here, Jess, on their aggressive defense. What a shame when you put 90% of all of your utility over towards red and you still die with no impact. Oh, the XG. come on. Oh, no, surely that's a 3K. And yes, it is. Coded. We called him goaded before and he's proving exactly why. And most players these days won't run the TCSG because it's weak as heck. But coded makes it look absolutely like it's a blasting cannon machine, which it's totally not anymore. <laughs> blasting cannon machine. I love it. Cat sign to collect the next two. And this is a... Well, a throw. <laughs> You're in a five versus three, and you peek one v one after the other into a doorway. Mm -hmm. When you have a jackal on side, when you've got smokes you can play behind. This is always my frustration with Villa for a lot of teams on the attack, I think, is when you look to the top floor to push into both sites. Normally, if you're attacking north, as we'll do now, you push from the south. If you're attacking AVG, you push from the north. What do you always come across for both sites? You come across single doorways, a single point mm -hmm. of entry where you've got to deal with a very narrow line of fire. And if you as a defender can keep manipulating that line of fire to take constant 1v1s, as we just saw Coated do, it can be so easy to clean up as long as you've got that confidence to win your ones, which he absolutely did. Great first round coming out from him. And I guess a good start from Guts is definitely not a, oh my God, they got completely rolled. The start of their round mm -hmm. was good. This could be a really spicy game. Well, we'll see here for uh, Damon whether they're going to have to rely on Coded to absolutely whip out all of the kills. I wouldn't say that they were relying on Coded. I think he just had a really good position there. He still had his Vulcan shield in place over next to Maps table. It was a bit more opportunistic for Coded there, and maybe that's just good game sense, good positioning, good read of the situation. I think Rin did their job on Red Stairs. It was a bit of a shame that with some of those magnet places, it didn't catch some of the uh, utility that they wanted. I'm glad we get a bit of a replay as well, because if you have a look at the, the magazine as he starts to shoot, he does run out of ammunition. And if he hadn't hit that last shot, he absolutely would have gone down. He's one bullet away from death as well. Would it have changed the outcome? No, not really. It went down to a 1v, you know, 1vx situation. But this round is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting because as an attacker, you can go front on. You can hit the wall pretty quickly and easily and you're pretty much on site and you're not trying to fight off site too much. That's where the best teams in coordination and the crossfires come in handy.
It's all about kind of preservation of your defender's life in a way. Like I said earlier on, we've seen this APAC sort of style blooming and we're even seeing Rogue employ it across in Europe too, where the aim is to disrupt the attackers early in the rounds. So they have no time to make anything happen. This is a very interesting early what? aggressive start out here inside 30 seconds. They've smoked out Astro. They got the shield. Naded into the smoke to get... Did they... Were they hoping to consume? I think they were looking for an ADS or something. Assuming there'll be an ADS in Astro. Didn't drone mm -hmm. it out apparently and just thought, well, we'll burn it out with the smoke. Hey, still went through. Whatever. That is so brilliant. To get rid of that shield so early on is unbelievable because that was a bit of a crux to the hold over towards Astro. The only other remaining shield now will be over towards Bedroom. That's an easy fix. If they cook all three of these ADSs, Magnets are coming out as well. Rin is trying to ADS trick. Oh no, if they aren't careful, they'll both get collected by grenades here, but instead it's an impact. And you can see Rin desperately trying to keep placing these ADSs. Pick them up, throw them back down. If you keep doing that, it will continue to help them reset. And that's why Yas will dance around the shield with magnets in hand. This is a really interesting way to, you know, bring back the utility meta that's been lost. Well, Rin's having to swing away from the door now, being concussed out by the Zofia, instead peeking onto the master wall, what, looking straight through into the closet in this case, and Yas still holding behind the shield on master doorway. They've got this east side of the map under lock and key, and Guts stalling ever so slightly here as well. That fast and frenetic start to get rid of the shield in Astro was great, but here we've gone through another 90 seconds of the round or so, and they've been held up by this utility game coming out of down one. Another wasted C4 will come out, and that's a bit of a shame because you can see that that's Katzeg's entire position oh. there to get those C4 kills. That's going to be a triple for JJ, and all of a sudden it's lighting up orange on your screens because guess what? The down one round we thought they'd be able to put through the momentum is lost ever so quickly. Oh my goodness! That is oh. a beautiful shot, and if this is a retake, I will eat my words, but... Ooh, no, calm it down for one second here. Some beautiful shots coming out. In fact, I would probably even put that in a bit of a replay reel there, but I think momentum shifting so quickly after round one in the favor of Guts shows that they're not deterred by what happened in round one. They just thought, mm. you know what, put it by the wayside. Let's keep it going. What well, we said, that the two roam clears that they had, killing off Rin and Woogie quite early on in that first round was well done. They didn't get caught out by C4s. They weren't deterred by the fact that someone was hanging downstairs. They kind of took their time and mm. dealt with it, which was great. They just didn't take the execute too well into coated. That second round, showing those strengths, being multiplied a couple of times over, admittedly, off the back of JJ, who's had a wonderful start so far. And that round there was a 4K for him, even with Katsang pulling off a 3K, almost turnaround, five kills for himself across those two rounds. Unfortunately for him, just not quite enough to the man that's got six kills, JJ. It's like top trumps. JJ's ever so slightly <laughs> ahead, and that's why they're winning the second round. What did you think of the ADS tricking by Ren? I liked it. The f I'm loving the fact that what they're doing is they are forcing them to use everything in their weaponry to get rid of one shield. They are mm -hmm. forcing multiple magnets. They're forcing every single ADS. In fact, I've seen it done in EUL, and I can't remember what team, but they used all three ADSs behind one sofa at one point. There's a lot of teams that are going, look, with the new ADS changes, do we just start, do we just start using them all in one position to absolutely keep it on lock? I like it because if you if that shield stays up and you've got a, a line of sight in left wall of triple wall, then you have complete control of the only entry the attackers want. Mm. Well, think about how it's played out on red holds, for example, on the gym and bedroom defense on Clubhouse in EUL. The number of times that we've seen mm. teams yeeting in flashes, concussions, even impacts and frags at points to try and clear the red players. We kept saying, well, if they ha use all the utility here, think about how little utility they'll have when it comes right. down to the execute. It's constantly a topic that keeps on coming up. And it, when I say the whole like defensively aggressive roams that we see defenders employing, the game plan normally is to find an opening kill, but we, we always say wasting time or even just burning a bit of utility. Sometimes that can be enough. And it absolutely is proven to be the case here because look at how much they burnt trying to get through master and failing for the most part. Sure, they eventually broke the deadlock, but that left them with such limited utility later. They relied so heavily on JJ getting four mm -hmm. kills in the round to himself. It could have fallen apart if he didn't do that kind of work. Well, if you're a down one fan, that is not what you're hoping for because with all of this utility emphasis here, you don't want them to just lose out on frags alone. Rin was just a tad too late to get that ADS down and that shield will go. And if you're Rin, you want to get out of their ASAP because they are using a lot of utility towards that area. That's a whole air jab wasted to the magnet as well, which could have been crucial if they want to cut off that bathroom rotate around for the defenders. Yas will get what he's looking for and that's the head of Papillon. And that means no more air jab 
Dabs will be expelled at, well, at, at all, rather. Count saying, does he still have a C4 in hand? Yes, he does. He hasn't been successful two rounds in a row, but he makes it work with the weapon, and maybe he could even follow it up with a double kill with a C4 below. Oh, literally a couple of milliseconds earlier, and he would have been able to find a kill there early enough onto Katsang, who's retreated his way back up Aviator Stairs. He's holding tight, though, expecting that Lily is going to come pushing in. I'd love to see her just to swing out now and kill him. It'd be so mm -hmm. glorious to see, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to think about it just yet. Lily equally could whack out the Jackal Tracker here. He's still got all three charges left and could know that he's holding nice and close. However, it would scare him back. Pete comes oh. out. Now they're both aware of each other's presence, but no kills are exchanged. Right now, it's just the two deaths onto Guts and dump down one. Sit with a small advantage with 45 seconds to play. Still heaps of time here for the attackers to work with. I like that Lily is the one that pinging out oh. players. No! JJ Corbin with the grenade in hand and Katsang gets that infamous double kill that they were looking for. All of a sudden now, 2v5 and Guts, they've got so much to go up against. The C4 laying on the shelf as well, rather on the corner as well. And now they're just going to have to get these frags that they seemingly can't put together. Oh, oh, oh. They've made good numbers on it though, Des, and uh, 20 seconds left. This actually becomes possible. It's honestly crazy how back and forth these rounds are. Both teams have been in 5v3s multiple times, and the round has ended up swinging a, a different way. Coated, now holding tight, brings down Lily. It's all down to light on the pushing. Oh, oh sees the Jaeger. What a flick onto the head. It's a 3k for him, and now he's got a plan. But Coated, we've seen what he can do. I don't think he's got a yokai out to be able to disrupt this one. The plan is going to go down, and only now does Coated move. He must know where the diffuser has gone down, but light has already pieced out. He's outside Sagittary Door. He's sat between sides here comes coated on the swing he always wins those a 2k for him in the round can you count how many times these games are going back and forth it's like a game of ping pong jess that was brilliant there as well because he had to have known he was top red yeah if he goes back into bedroom you've got the line of sight there you should be able to hear it but if you missed it there was a yellow ping to top landing as well now that's a bit of a shame if you're an attacker you're in the prime position in a post plant and all of a sudden, without your knowledge, you're getting yellow pinged. That's brutal. No yokais. The echo should be at a disadvantage. And they still walk away with the round win. Okay, it's coded. He's goaded. Whatever you want to say. Either way, that should have gone the way of guts. And we love rounds that are very, very close like this. But look at the scoreboard. It's top heavy here, Des. And we always criticize teams that are relying on several players to do a lot of the work. It's just been one of those fast-paced games that it feels like on a map like Villa, things should be a little bit slower. It's a big map to clear. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to drone. There's a lot to do. But the teams are just like, oh, you spawn into the map. Right, let's fight. It's turning into absolute <laughs> chaos super early on. And again, the number of times that these teams have found across these three rounds so far, there's been a couple of rounds where a team finds the opening 2K and then finds themselves with the backs against the wall, forced down to it in a one versus one or a one versus two, and they still manage to pull things out. It's beautiful to see. Yes, it makes things unpredictable. Yes, it's a little bit chaotic, but that's what we live for in Siege sometimes. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see Guts on defense because the way that they absolutely shred and run around like wild men on Clubhouse, for example, can be done even better on a map like Villa. A lot of rotate potentials underneath, around the map, up red, main stairs, astro stairs. I think the way that Damon are moving is half of the way that Guts has been moving on their defense recently. So that will be an exciting second half because the aggression from Guts, I know it is coming. However... The stairs emphasis, yet again, down one. They love in these staircases. That's why the Banshees, the barbed wires, and all of the utility is going to go towards it. They've got the magnets. They've got the ADSs. I reckon in future, Des, and, and I hate to, down one's going to message me later and be like, shut up, please. There will be teams that ban either the Jaeger or the Wamai against them because there is a lot of reliance on both of those operators. Mm. It's interesting seeing it being brought out so much as well because that was such a big thing last year. You know, the utility matter that everyone will cry about. We're in a spot now where it's more of a niche pick and mm -hmm. Wamai well, still gets banned, definitely not permanently, and some teams do employ it. And some attacking teams have no problem with that. They manage to deal with it quite well. But I do like how Dan want to find these kind of choke points and forcing that to be where all utility must mm -hmm. be dumped to find their way through. It's really interesting to watch. We could see a couple of those ADSs were replaced. They've decided that the main stairs will be the hold, not red. So Rin turns around and goes, okay, I'm going to go put an ADS to protect that Vulcan shield where Coda got that 3k from last time. And I think that's the right call. That means Rin, if anything comes sailing in, well, they'll be dead quicker than anything. So this main stairs will be the first point of progression here for the attackers. Lily's down below again, lurking, trying to find anyone off site. 
and Yas will be the one that really needs to make this one work. He doesn't seem perturbed at all from the explosions or the concussions around him, but they know he's there. And this C4 could change everything. It could have, but unfortunately gets needed out. But Coated swings at the same time for the trade. So not all is lost. Main stairs was clear, but then the aggressor was cleared out immediately afterwards. So all things being neutral, no one has main stairs, at least temporarily. Assume you're going to find someone taking control of that pretty soon and looking to make a play happen. It's crazy. Papillon pushing his way straight up here, looking up towards 90. Knows that there's some aggression out towards study to be done by the rest of his team. Drones coming in. And this is why we said again, Villa, one of those maps that really can reward getting on the drones. You have a lot of time. It's a big map to play around. It can really help just to check those little nooks and crannies where you can find players sat waiting. You say it's a net neutral here when that 1v1 occurred on those main stairs between Yas and JJ, but I argue that Dam1 actually has the leg up. They got the big hitter from Guts. That's their top fragger out of commission. He's the one that's been able to salvage rounds here for their team. So if they lose, I'm not saying it's because they don't have JJ. I mean, half of Guts can gun out in their own right, but that was a big pick, at least in my mind. Now mm. with 25 seconds left, not a lot opened uh. up for them to push in on. There's going to be problems. Ah, there's oh. a problem here as well. It's called a C4, and apparently two kills swinging back to DWG is the way to look at it. Make it three as Katsang gets second on 90. They have to shut down Guts' attack in its tracks. And with only 15 seconds to reconcile, something tells me it's not going to happen. DWG do close out the round from what seemed like a bit of a freak plant for a second coming in behind the bar, mm. being denied by a C4. Everything went crazy from there. I didn't even know it was going down. I'm so focused. What's happening over towards Aviator? Is there any study pressure? How about red stairs? Has anyone decided to do a pinch? Oh, no, they're already in bar. My apologies. Didn't spot that little sneak in there. And that's how teams are trying to play recently. I think, uh, which team was it that had that sneaky crouch walking Ash every round? Um, On Villa? You. You're thinking of uh, Nathan when they, they played from NM and played against Na'Vi, maybe. Got 17 kills recently. crouch walking around Villa. Was it? I don't know. No, not on Villa. I'm just talking about recently. There's been players who've been taking oh, Ash. Oh, P4. Crouch, thank you. There we go. P4 crouch walking their way in and causing an absolute bit of disaster. I think the same can be said from uh, IGL support flex players who know how to get into sight and get a player down without the knowledge. That's what happened when that smoke was popping off in Astro when they did the trophy hold. He couldn't hear the player going down. There were also no cameras to hear it going down. And when the smoke is going off on your right-hand side, that's going to mask a lot of the plant sound. So... Oh, that's a nice little electric claw. I'm going to cut myself off there. I've seen a lot of, you know, people do this on Oregon, for example, but that's a little nifty one. And that means it can't be destroyed from above or a Twitch drone driving in and looking out that wall and going, huh, is it above? I like that. I like a bit of creativity that we see with this. I remember for the longest time, we used to see these kind of plays on a couple of other maps. And uh, I think recently it's kind of died out. And interestingly, a lot of teams have been bringing along the bandit over something like a Kaid. I'm curious to know from your side, why do you think that is, especially mm -hmm. on maps like Clubhouse, for example, is where we commonly see the bandit over something like a kite? Mm -hmm. I mean, as someone who loves, loves to bandit trick, you can bandit trick a Thatcher. You can, even with the new changes, as long as you're swift, as long as you know how to deal with those bandits, if they do get disabled, you can bandit trick a Thatcher. Nine times out of ten. There's no Thatcher ban here today. That's a great indication that if this team, which they're not, and I'm not saying why not, I think maybe with their particular attack strategy, they don't need a Thatcher. But a lot of teams who go, oh, well, we've got the Thatcher, let's just use that. And they forget that a really good bandit tricker can deal with that. That's probably why there's no need to bring, or you could bring it in cohesion with a Kaid instead. Um, I think you get more control with the bandit charges. Interesting, actually, speaking of which, in this round, they haven't brought along the Wamai as well. Something that's been a staple of their defenses has been the Wamai and the Jaeger combo. But here, swapping it out for the Pulse and the Kaid, and of course, all the C4s that come in conjunction, three of them. Oh, I was going to say, bit of a risk just chucking that straight down there, hoping that it would roll and hopefully kill someone, but gets immediately C4'd out by Katsang. And straight away, he's now dialing back to sight. It's like we said earlier on, get the opening kill, get yourself back to safety, and that is a massive advantage. Well, he wasn't hoping for a kill there. In fact, he actually was able to dispatch the electric claw and open up laundry in record time. So he actually did his job as sad as it is. He will lose the sledgehammer. So that is a brutal hit to the attacking lineup. And you've lost your top fragger. So it is a triple whammy losing JJ that early on. Multiple C4s coming out. Three in total here for Dan one. No need to bring a Wamai when you know most of your battle is going to be from underneath. That's why the Pulse is going to be so integral to this round. Work out where they're going to be. See if you can pop a 
C402, and that is going to work wonders. But Laundry, that's going to be the part that Katzeg needs to focus on, and he has to dance around the verticals as well. Oh, but Lily's got it as well. That F2 something we're starting to see a resurgence of. G2, another team that I think are making good use of it lately. And the vertical from Crazy Papillon almost results in a kill on Katzang, but can't Ooh. quite connect. But thankfully, Yura is already downstairs and ready to trade back. Yura himself almost nearly dying out. It is trade central here down on this site. Four versus three for the side of Guts. But again, I looked at the clock at the top of the screen, 45 seconds, and start thinking, guys. Need a bit more control on the downstairs here. You've got a little bit upstairs, but that execute's got to come through soon to give yourself some padding time to make errors because inevitably that can happen when it comes around to an execute. Oh, good read. I know that Lily was droning that before and see if anyone rotated towards red. Works it out very well. And that lurk over towards Memorial has paid huge dividends. It means the player could go down. Vertical hold oh. is very weak there from light. Hitting bar after bar. The new m, &M if you ask me. And now it's down to a 1v3. The retake's possible, especially when you're hitting shots like that. And the SMG can shred through their oh. opponents. And down onto Europe means that it's all 1v1. It's all going to be up to crazy. Papillon, only one kill to his name, but he only needs one more to get this round in pocket. A very needed round. Pros, they don't fake, but Woogieman does, and that means oh, he's going to have to get this kill off. Gets him down to one HP, or rather one shot. He's got 17, seven, 17 seconds to work with here, Des. That's a lot of time if he wants to be able to get this oh. defuse, and that's the only kill you need. You might not be fragging out in every other round, but that's the round where your team needed you, and you brought it to fruition. How close are these rounds, man? Coming down to a 1v1 Ooh. in the post plan. The last one was coming down to a big spray down from Katzang on 90. Otherwise, it was close. Prior to that, we saw the 5 versus 3 that got... To, well, 4 versus 2, I think it was, actually, that got turned back on them by Coated. The rounds are so back and forth and so close between these two teams that I think if at the end of the day we look at the scoreline and, and I don't know, Dan Wanna pulled far ahead and are at say seven and four, it's not going to tell the full mm -hmm. story of how this game is played out. It's been really thrilling to watch. That could have been quite possibly a 1vx or well, 1v3 in total retake clutch situation for Woogie, who I think has been quite an under understated support player, especially for Dan Wan. I don't think a lot of people have looked over to him and give him a lot of credit for the things that he does do because there's quite a lot of flashy fraggers on the side of Dan Wan, and especially during those CL qualifiers, or rather the, the Pro League qualifiers when they were going through the relegations fights, you know, just months ago. I really looked to him as being the solid support that Dan Wan needed. And when the front line, you know, faltered and we saw Rin go down, or maybe we saw a couple of the other players go down, Katzeng as well, um, Yas being brought on to Damwon has been a huge, huge help to the strength and the firepower that Damwon has. Wookie, he's just there in the background ready to go. So I do hope that a lot of people pay more attention to him because I think he's a really good player. He's just yet to really come out and be as flashy as the rest of them. I mean, you say that back on day one against Fnatic, I remember it really vividly was that Yas, Woogie and Rim were the three big players that we were celebrating like all hell on mm -hmm. Oregon, I think it was. He went 14 and 8 as a support yep. main. He absolutely fragged his brains out. Second only to Yas, who arguably had one of the greatest games of his life going 16 and 6 absolutely. in the same matchup. I think what it really got me excited about was I look back then and think, oh, Kat sang and coated. Both went negative, didn't have a great day. The other three all went positive. And then look at how things have shaped up so far today. Katzang, mm -hmm. 10 kills. Coated, 7 kills. The two that were quite and weak one are now the ones really flying here in play day four. And although that's not yep. to say, oh, everyone else has got quiet or got crap and really fallen off. If nothing else, it goes to show the potential that this team has. And bearing in mind, most of them are brand new to APAC North this season. I'm really excited to see how they develop in further stages as well. Not to say that this stage is over for them, but they can only get better from here on. Speaking of getting better, this is the last attacking round and Gut says, well, we are so sick of your magnets and your ADSs. Let's just bring one EMP and they all mean nothing. That is the adaptation I was looking for and they've brought it. Too little, too late? Yeah, but I mean, better late than never, if you ask me. They'll deal with that shield in record time on that door. And all of a sudden, bringing one different operator after Lily was having not the best of games so far, let's be honest. That means that Lily is able to have a really big impact, if not for frags, but just for utility as a whole. And you can almost always guarantee that when they play trophy site, Rin will go and aggress and peek study door nine times out of ten. So to see Rin over there dancing around gren grenades, I am not surprised whatsoever. 
I mean, as you say, it just kind of breaks the hold out here where they can now leave just Euro on the other side of the map and have the others look to push him from the south side and have this kind of split pressure. Because what went wrong for them previously here was that you have Katsang being left alive, basically alone, at the other side of the map, or mm -hmm. I guess stood on the more defensive side and just saying, hey, I can spray you guys down as you come in because I know that you're all pushing very one-dimensionally. So I like that they're also taking multiple angles of attack here, not leaving it just down to chance that Katsang isn't going to go nuts on a certain angle. Here it's Rin that starts out bringing down crazy papian as he tried to push his way through aviator diffuser hits the deck and the nomad is down so you've got that to worry about in the late round that there are no air jabs available to keep you safe papian went down with the air jabs rounds ago as well and the diffuser being over towards landing isn't necessarily surprising but it does sort of ask questions as to how they were going to get that player down in trophy door or rather in statue door when trophy isn't the point of of contention that they originally wanted how are you going to get wolf control how are you going to stop them peeking around from red did you expect two people to be able to do it guess what those two people they're dead now there's no one left and it means lily's gonna have to come in and get the kills instead well, he's trying to go in here for a plan, I think, as well. Wart's in, found a kill, and going for a plan. He's doing a Leon from their game on Clubhouse the other day. Plant is going down, so now it's all down to cover from the other side. Here's Europe, but they haven't quite got the covered angle from behind. They put him in the dirt. And down one will win on a small little flank coming in from bathroom here. Unfortunately for them, planting in, dare I say, the wrong corner? Wouldn't have mattered, because even planting on default, they would have been flanked from bathroom and lost that one out. Yeah. This is what happens when you leave things down to the clock. That was a bit of a shame because uh, they'd seen that there were vertical holes underneath the default. They went, oh, someone could pick me from here. Let me replace. Oh, there's a hole in the wall. Oh, that's an angle. Oh, I could be seen from everywhere. You can't win. In that situation, I actually would have preferred they went for kills. And I don't say that often, but when you're in a position of there are people underneath, there's a open default wall over towards triple wall, and there's three different angles from people over towards trophy, maybe just take gunfights in that situation and hope that you win out on numbers alone. A tricky one, but a round nevertheless into the hands of Damwon. And as they go into their attacking half, I want to bring up my stats here and go attacking. Are they more attacking or defending side statistically usually? Well, I'm going to tell you what. Damon probably, probably did quite well because they are very defensive sided on this map. That's not a surprise, it's Villa. So if they do a little less as good or rather not as good as they did on the defensive side, I wouldn't be surprised. It'll be mm. on Guts's term now. And immediately you're seeing the straight up change in setup. We saw DWG on their defensive half bringing mutes nearly every single round. On the other side for Euro, you're seeing mm -hmm. the Mozzie coming in, which screams to me a little bit more portability here, looking to get around the map, take some of those drones, of course, so you have intel on your own side, and still retains that C4. The only thing you're really losing out on, I guess, is going to be that shotgun for the site transformation efforts, but when you've got JJ on the smoke, that's kind of already covered. So although a very small change, kind of tells you a lot about a team's intended play style here, I think. Oh, I love pre-play C4s. They're always nasty, and a lot of plays do come in over towards Wolf. So it's not a surprise that both teams have tried this pre-play C4 position. We saw that in the first half from Dam one. Now it's going to be Guts popping mm. it over there. And a lot of those pests going out towards Red. Is there also a Red hole behind Guts there? Can we get a confirmation as to whether they've got a Red hold going on? Or if it's just going to be Euro there? Okay. So they're not really repeating what Damwon's doing. There is an ADS there and a Vulcan shield, so it looks like a lot of the emphasis will be there. Maybe it's Yura who's going to back on up and play that and hopefully catch some drones. I think that's the idea is, you know, leave it so. In fact, no, he's got two of his pets in his pocket here as well and has moved them down yeah. towards the south. Now looking down towards main stairs. So he's kind of porting them around as he wants to, I think. And just saying, okay, where do we need to create an information blackout here? They can, if they want to, just yeet utility at us and watch it get caught out by the ADSs. Or we have enough time to back away thanks to the one ADS and JJ. I always get nervous Hello? when there's smoke that's peaking, but Lily with a massive flank brings down Yas and Rin from inside of our studio, and that's going to absolutely cripple this attack. You've lost the Yana, you've lost the Sophia, nays and impacts are gone, but just like that, DWG have found two back onto the other side with Lily and JJ both falling. Now we're into a three versus three, and now the round can enter, dare I say, the main phase of play. That was lazy, Katz, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Call him out on it. Say it like it is, Des. You know what else I'm going to say? The two players that were out on balcony from Dam one, how could the Jaeger drop the study hatch when you're right there? What is going on, Dam one? Your first half was dominant, and now your first attacking round looks like you don't even know how to play. Get it happening here, boys, because that was a sloppy 
or rather attack on the study. You've got the lines of sight. Jaeger should not be allowed to do that. Numbers are even, but for the most part, I think Damon are on the back foot here because you've got about 55 seconds. The attackers, well, I mean, for the most part, they don't have enough control to work with. They still have three Selmers. None of them are popped. Is there mutes on the... I mean, what? There's no mutes. There's no wall denial. What's stopping oh. them from opening things? I mean, all three in back pocket draws questions. I agree. I think here it's more the positional piece because after they're just settled on these early two kills, it's like, okay, what do we actually control now? We've lost our kind of main stairs pressure. We need to re regain control of that before we can start pushing up 90. Otherwise, you're going to find trying to push inside a vault, you might just find yourself getting flanked, which is why you got Woogie Hole in the longer angle. It makes sense. They're now in a spot where they've got full control of this west side. You can start thinking about it. Oh, he's pushing through the smoke. Oh. That must be one that sends the heebie jeebies up here. Down he goes to Yura. Now taking control of 90. That is their kind of safe bed of angle or aggression coming. In from vault side now completely disrupted but they've done a full rotator here just 180 degrees they've now moved over and are going for the plant instead inside of aviator they might be able to pull it off coated hits the deck woogie's gonna be able to pull this one off can he clutch no. he couldn't earlier on he finds a 3k you said you wanted to see him step up jess and that's what he's doing one versus one against yura 35 seconds on the clock and woogie finds it four kills for him in the round and he goes i may have lost the 1v3 earlier but i'm definitely not going to miss out on this 4k mr dependable woogie man and you said before that was a nightmare coming out of the smoke like that oftentimes you know i think <laughs> players forget that it's not impenetrable players can come running through it and i think that's why he was so focused on looking at it the timing to have a smoke out in your hand at the moment that a peekaboo happens that was terrifying this game is now a horror game to me it was my heart left out of its chest but it's not over here for Guts. Even though that round sort of looked like it was going to be a tricky one, I think for Dam one now to prove me wrong, which I don't mind being proven wrong, but to prove me wrong that, you know, stumbling in the first half of your round, you couldn't recollect it later, that's good. That's a bit of confidence that this team needs to move on to further attacking rounds. And for Guts, this, this, uh, this begs a lot of questions for me. A team that I said was pretty much the second, I would have put a second in all of Japan. Um, what's going on? I don't want to say it's the map either. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to bring it down to such minutia, but... Mm. It's a hard one, really, when I think about it. I remember kind of thinking, speaking to people about the Japanese region uh, when we all started out last season, and we said, okay, there are three teams there, and generally they're considered the most aggressive of the bunch. And then we started watching them play. And instead, what we kind of got was CAG is the very kind of slow-moving, lumbering beast that was very kind of, I guess, strategical in comparison to the other Japanese teams. Then you had Fav that was kind of aggressive, but did sometimes slow things down. And then you had Guts mm -hmm. that was just out and out aggression, <laughs> disruption, looking to get in the faces of people. And I feel that just kind of looked to change a little bit or it started to towards the back end of next year. Then we got into this year mm -hmm. in this current meta where you're so heavily rewarded for being aggressive. And that's why so many of these rounds have turned into inside the first 60 seconds, there's two to four people dead. It's chaotic. It does benefit teams who kind of rely on the enemy not having their full competition to go for executes. But Guts are definitely one of the teams that are really struggling to capitalize on the later round advantage that gives, I think. Mm-hmm. I have felt they've been a little bit more passive than the usual guts we've seen in this first stage of 2021. And I'm not saying that that might have something to answer for, but maybe they can, you know, get, you know, live by the whole attitude of swing or be swung. And maybe that will work <laughs> a little bit more in their favor if they do want to talk about mechanical skill, which, of course, guts has a lot of. A few of the players might not be feeling confident after the first half, not being able to put a few kills on the board, but kills don't mean everything. If you can get a plant down like we saw in the previous round with Damwon, then the round becomes exponentially more winnable. Hopefully Woogie Man doesn't befall the curse that uh, Crazy Papillon did on the uh, Nomad, and they can get a few more air jabs out to work with here. But they're going to bring the Thatcher. Round number one, Thatcher coming out, impact trick to stop the Selmers continually going off. And this looking pretty good for Damwon, who's done this all so far with, you know, al almost more than half a round to go. Mm, and it's 5v5 with half the round gone, as you say. It's a very peaceful start to what has otherwise been a very aggressive set of rounds in this game, at least. Trophy and statue, of course, what we're looking towards on the upside aggression. You can see a lot of guts hanging out towards the north for the most part, at least holding up towards that side, at least to begin with, I think. And on the side of Damwon, the east somewhat, imagine you've got a couple coming from the south. This is where Rin had that really fun, aggressive start earlier on that really benefited them, mm. I think. And they are getting started, but my question is, Jess, why this late oh, into the why? round? 60 seconds remaining, you're only just getting started inside a study? Why? 
My my understanding is is that once they open up this wall to cut off the rotates from Astro towards uh, Statue and Trophy, that they can do a Statue um, a Statue Southwest door default play, mm. and that's actually impossible to stop unless one you're underneath or two you have a very very poignant C4, and to throw it you need to expose yourself to now open walls and bedroom. So it's the right strategy. Unfortunately, however, it means that there's there going to be a lot of frags as all the holes are opened up. Yeah, and this is off down to the south, and JJ's kind of completely shut this attack down, bearing in mind as well that these two pushing in from the south were going to be critical to their execute. He now can't get away with it. JJ still dancing around, looking to just waste a bit of time here, I imagine. 15 seconds on the clock. Two versus three for down one. Could this go to five and three, or does it go to six and two? In come the smokes, in comes the attempt, but the C4 from below. This is the problem when you don't deal with everything with enough time. They've got about five seconds left. Katzang's alone in a one versus three. Gets a little bit to put out the KD and go third. 13 and 4, but sadly, it's not going to help the round at all. 5 to 3, now the scoreline. I said the only way to deal with that default Southwest statue plant is from underneath, or someone maybe running around red from Wolf. And guess what? Lo and behold, a C4 comes sailing up from underneath. That probably goes to show a little bit more patience from Guts than it does misunderstanding from Dam One, however. I'm, I'm not going to say that you should have a pre-placed drone down there that doesn't get destroyed by the defender. I'm not going to put that on Dam One. I just think Guts, they played the long game on it. They let the, mm. you know, the seconds tick on by. They made sure that the C4 was either pre-placed. I didn't see in total if it was pre-placed or that someone was there to deliver it. They know where the default plan is going to come from because Dam One tried it last time. And, I mean, at that point, it becomes predictable. So for Guts... That round should have been a given. They knew what was coming. This round, however, it will be a little bit more telling, especially if down one starts to take vertical. Guts is a very aggressive team and does very well with the aggression and late roams or rather late flanks. That's what I want to see out of them. If it's lacking, down one will take too much ground too quickly. Hmm. Good play by JJ, at least to have the presence of mind and the knowledge, like you say, on the side of Guts, to be aware of that push coming from the south to find a 2k, shut the whole thing down and force it down to the wire. One thing we haven't touched on a whole bunch, by the way, is the Yana being used by Yas. Now, we haven't seen it have a massive impact, but you're seeing, again, stylistic differences here between both teams, where we saw it back in the first half, when it was over to the side of Guts attacking, Jacqueline Nomad was their go-to combo. What some teams have lent towards, and we saw this back on play day one, is the Iana and the Nomad together. Iana gets in with the... Uh, What's it called? The name's completely gone from my head. Gone? 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 No, no, no. The the, dec the decoy, whatever it's called. It has oh, an actual the, uh, name. The Gemini. The Gemini, thank you. Yeah, there I was like, what, what right, is sorry. that word? And I couldn't think of it. I was like, oh? <laughs> they have the Gemini go charging in. It makes sure things are cleared out. And then you kind of cover a lot of ground that you've taken with the Nomad. And again, look to push into the rest of the map. It's very safe. It's very secure. It's very kind of structured. Again, in the very aggressive play style that we keep on seeing from a lot of teams, it does really help to make sure you're not about to get a nasty flank. Although we've already seen Lily hit one of those back in a couple of rounds ago when they came in a flank through Art Studio. Euro is playing so aggressive in Pantry there. In fact, had that window been opened up behind them earlier, then that was a free kill onto the back of Euro's head. So Euro needs to be very careful here. A little bit more map awareness and game sense will save players from dying unnecessarily. Speaking of an unnecessary death, that's JJ peeking out. He didn't need to do it, but he decides he wants to, and then he doesn't net the kill that he needs. Big frag are going down. I know I'm going to keep pointing it out, but you can only be the opening kill so many times before I'm going to start criticizing, no matter how many kills you've got on the board. <laughs> You're getting as many as you are losing, and it doesn't really always work out as worth. Now, Gemini coming up the stairs is going to be a good sign. Now, what's going Ooh. on? But Yura picks off Yas. Man, I mean, you know someone was around, but to kind of peek on that blindly, when you know chances are they're going to swing on that angle and wait to see if you do peek yourself once you're off the Gemini kind of animation to cancel it out, makes things a little bit too easy. Euro now steps into the same spot, and they're daring someone else to peek on this angle. Keep looking up, buddy. You'd have had the right idea, but it's Woogie, who's had a hell of a couple of rounds recently. 4Ks, 3Ks galore. Lily to shut down, coated, and again, Jess, we find ourselves in a three versus three. Crazy finds one, finds the second, shuts the round down, it looks like Guts should be bringing this back into a five versus four. But we've all seen what Woogie can do. And this time round, he has the advantage of time. Ooh. Catches Crazy Pappy on as he peeks around the corner. Flash is singing in, now looking to push his way inside of the site. He's got a deal with both the Smoke, who's got two canisters left, and the Mozzie here. Does he dare just try and bolt through the holes? And then tells me he really shouldn't. But it looks like he might try and think about it. 
Oh no, you should have reloaded first. The ARX does not have a lot of bullets to work with. He doesn't have the AK in hand, which has so much magazine. He's only got about 21 bullets. He does decide to get the reload off, but it's only enough to really take two short bursts at two different players. He'll have to hit his shots. He'll decide that the plan is the play. Whether he baits it or he sticks it like a pro, it doesn't matter. And he will decide to stick it out. He doesn't hear anyone running towards him. Gun up, my friend. You're going to have to nah. gun out on two players. And I think he thinks he's to the left, but he's a little bit misturbed as the player comes swinging through China. It'll be light with the SMG to take that particular retake. And these are very crucial rounds here for Guts because the moment the down one get onto match point, it starts to scream a little bit of stress onto the side of dab one and there you go they're going to call a little bit of a timeout and i would too especially when the other team's starting to gain momentum against you you want to cut it off as soon as you can oh i mean poor woogie how many 1vx's has he, has he been put into in this game or rounds when he's had to step up and go big for the team as well we spoke about him a little bit earlier on and what he achieved back in week one but you're really starting to mm. see it not happen in just one round not just two rounds but now starting to step into the three or four territory. It's madness. That's something that even if you can be the best support player you can be, and I'm thinking like another uh, APAC uh, team of Fnatic, they brought in Alphama, and I think he's been an extraordinary addition. He is a very well-rounded support player. He's been all over the world, played in multiple different you know nations and, and regions. And for me, that's probably the best support player you can get. Um, but that player had to be shipped over from France all the way over to, where is he, in Taiwan at the moment? I don't even know where he's living at the moment, but that's a big, big move, and that's across the world. I think when you're speaking about on a regional level, Wugiman is one of the best support players in his region. I think he does an excellent job. I think he's consistent, but just because he can't pull out all the 1VXs doesn't mean he's not doing his job correctly. Oh, he's doing a fantastic job. I can think of a lot of supports who have crumbled a lot earlier on than that, to be fair, and he's still keeping yeah. himself alive and having the impact. Sure, a couple of rounds haven't gone his way. You can't really expect a player to win multiple 1VXs in a game. To be fair, he's won the one, which is good enough for them. Now he's in a spot where you're asking the rest of the team, okay, how do we stop this game slipping away from us? We were quite far in the lead. We said back in the first half, Jess, if this was to end at, say, 7-4 to down one, you wouldn't say that was the tail of the tape in its entirety, and the Guts did put up a pretty good show in some rounds. But it feels like a down one are being sucked into their kind of style of play. The chaotic vibe of let's wait two minutes and then bam, it explodes. Two or three kills are exchanged between each team, and it comes down to one player having to do it all because of some crazy flank later into the round. Guts are thriving in the chaos here and down one in the last couple of rounds at least have really started to struggle. Well, they'll go back to Aviator here and whether or not Guts, it does look like they're just going to close everything on up. I'd be interested to see if they do a half wall on the AV study wall as well or if they're going to close that all up. A lot of teams love having that half wall opened up, especially when you've got a couple of shields to play with. Uh, looks like Guts is only going to bring one. And where was that placed? Oh. Oh. I like this angle. Okay. All right. I mean, a lot of players will stand up on the bar to get that angle all the way over towards landing, but I mean, they're going to use the shield instead. I don't mind it. I just think that, uh, yeah, there's more meta ways of playing the shield, and that doesn't mean it's correct. There's just different ways, and yeah, threading the needle. The slow-mo always makes it better. It always looks mm. better in slow-mo. It always makes you feel like when you play the game and you have the slight delay in reaction, you see the minuscule delay, like a couple of frames from pros, and you're just like, I don't feel so wow. bad. Because you see in slow-mo, it feels like a long second or so for them to shoot. And then you're like, actually, no, that's in slow-mo. I am just bad at the game. At least that's how I feel, Jess. I know you feel like you're an absolute god at it. I understand that. Me? Nah. <laughs> well, you would hope with all the thousands and thousands of hours I have in this game that I can shoot somewhat straight every now and then with a head hide muzzle awareness. But it's not about me here today. It's about who's going to be taking home points. And with down one, one round up, I mean, I think the analysts said they were a little bit more convinced. At least Ace said that he was convinced Damon would walk away with the win. I actually think so far, especially with the defensive fight Guts are putting up, I wouldn't be surprised if they both walk away with points in overtime. Yet to be seen, however, because I want to see a convincing take by Damon one not leaving any holes for flanks or sneaky little peeks from the defenders like this one mm. i like what jj's done here as well drop the smoke go and peek onto study looking to aggress across the whole south side of the map here but it's rin nice man just managing to catch out crazy he's had a really good couple of rounds lately as well 2k i believe it was in the last round for them to force the one versus three now finds himself out and done early c4 would have died with him as well i believe in this case 
Maybe it was used. Not sure. The one of the two, I think, suggests as much. In fact, no, it's gone down to zero. It's been used. Rip. Rip. Love the new indicator at the top as well. Gives us a really good indication. Talking about indications, Damon have no indication that they're throwing grenades at no one. Oh. They're also throwing em EMPs inside of those ADSs. Not sure what Coda was trying to do with that EMP. It wasn't going to do much damage or much effect anyway. And as a result now, they're going to get a lot of this territory towards main stairs that they wanted. They'll get it for free, and it's only Crazy Papillon that goes down for the trouble. And when I say only, well, the rest of the defenders, they've backed all the way on up on the side. You can see how many smoke babes. There's one left. No more C4s. So that actually might be really dangerous if they do manage to get a vault plan off. But you're right, he'll make his aggression down classical hallway. He'll get punished for it. And it looks like Guts, there's a couple of plays that want to make hero plays here. But I beg to differ, that's not the play. Right idea here, I think, from Katsang as well. Rather looking to push aggressively. Let's go open these walls up now. They don't know the light's tucked in really close. Shotgun out around the corner. Oh, they will keep coming eventually onto Koti, but he already found JJ, so it turns into a trade. Yas bringing down Lily. It's a one versus four for light. Goes to show again the magic that a timeout can do, or the magic of a potential clutch. Sadly not to be. DWG do find round number 10, and we spoke about this the other day, at how we've seen rounds completely transform and go flawless after losing three rounds in a row, for example, off the back of a timeout we've just seen the same thing happen for dwg oh well i'm gonna have to start asking ace before the day you know commences what his predictions are because so far i mean he's going to be one for one and maybe he'll get all the, his different predictions as the day rolls on because with match point rolling into the hands of damon it means the guts need to make up two whole rounds and that's just to get them into overtime. Yes, okay, they'll walk away with points, but if I bring up the leaderboard as it currently exists and we're halfway through the stage right now, it means that for Guts, sitting in fifth place, barely, mind you, Dab1 are right behind them, they will be mm. overtaken by Dab1 if they manage to get points here, especially with the round differential. So for Guts, they need to be very careful because they don't want to be losing, especially in overtime, because that head-to-head, -head, once you start getting into the nitty-gritty, can be something that can shift the leaderboard very quickly. It's between fifth and sixth spot, Des, but you want to be trying to overtake other teams, especially ones that are right above you within reaching distance. Yeah, I think it was what I talked about in the pre-game segment, but no, when, when I had the chance to talk about these two, is that I said, whoever wins this game today, this is the make or break stage of the season. This is now, we are now over the halfway mark. In fact, after the conclusion mm -hmm. of the second game of the day, we are officially halfway through APAC North 2021 wow. stage one. That feels like it's come and gone ridiculously fast so far. But let's not forget that if Damon had lost today, they sit on two points after four games. Chances are you're not going to be able to catch up to the likes of Cloud9, yep. Cyclops, even Talon, who will be sat on nine plus points come the end of this play day. That's when things then start disappearing out of the vision of you. But down one here to go on to five points, then kind of be tied fourth place with Fab. That does keep you in the running a little bit. It does mean you've got to find a couple of wins in the next couple of weeks if you want to keep yourself going. And I don't believe they've played against Cyclops yet. That's going to be a real war for them. And that is coming in play day six, I think. Yes, it is. Next week, they play against T1. And in the final week, they come up against Fab. They could very well be having a war with Fab on play day number seven to see who finishes <laughs> top four. How fitting that schedule will be. And we do think that, I mean, considering how T1's been performing recently, that should be three points in the bag, especially with how Dan Warner putting up the, you know, the score against Guts here. They obviously have what it takes to push it against mid to higher tier teams, especially in the Japanese region. Surely when it comes to T1 in a region that's their own, they're going to be able to absolutely blast through it. Speaking of, one minute down on the round and match point is flashed at the top of your screen. They'll start by opening up the wall very, very carefully. What I don't want to see from Damon is a rotate over to study for a late plant onto door for the southwest default. Don't do it. You've tried it. It doesn't work. Just go head on to see what you can work with here. Maybe even a pinch up Astro Stairs or something. But they're using the utility really quickly here, Des. So this is good. Mm. It means that people aren't dying with it in their pocket the same way the Guts players were. Keen to see how this Maestro shapes up for them in this round as well. Not something we've seen brought for most of the half. Kind of a last second swap in, I dare say it feels like. Maybe a change is what they need. Oh, Apparently, yes. yes. 
Because it finds the opening kill onto Yas with the Alder. And we spoke about the Alder a lot this week, it feels like, Jess. Seen it doing absolute work in EUL. Could yet be the same case here in APAT North. We'll see if it keeps guts in this game. If it takes us up to, well and truly, the last round of regulation. Or if we'll step into overtime not long after. Two kills come singing in. Rin to bring one back to at least stem the bleeding for now. But at this point, they're down into a four versus three. And need to be so careful. Because this could very easily slip to being guts' rounds. They really need Rin to rotate back over towards them because there's not enough cover, especially if Woogie Man starts to get the plant. That's a gun out of hand. It means that they need this crossfire. They've opened up, but it's only a crouch hole, and that's going to expose them to multiple angles. Oh, no, the Elder Traces are spraying past Woogie, but they don't connect, and he'll be able to take out Light as a result. With 30 seconds left, they have enough time to use Rin's last drone here to ascertain what the whole situation is, but they decide that concussions are the play instead. ADS will collect that last air jab, and it means now they're going to have to go for frags on the player because there's an evil eye watching them over and over pinging them incessantly as they try and make their ingress on the site and with 10 seconds left it's just running into a murder hole here Dez Woogie Man's gonna have to hit the shots of his life here with ARX that doesn't have enough bullets <laughs> he knows he can see he's being sprayed and he'll go down to the carbine as Yura makes his presence known over towards Trophy and not hard when you have red pings being splattered left, right, and center from a very, very placid evil eye crossover and trophy. That's not a round that damn one wanted because now they don't really have the buffer room to work with. They're one round away from overtime. It's almost like, again, we just breathe it into existence. Oh, the Maestro, I haven't seen that before. It gets brought along, could be impactful. We've seen what it does in EUL. What does it do? Provide pin constant pings as they try and push through Master. Lily finds a 2k from inside of Statuary across in towards Trophy. And I was just like, all the way around, actually. Statuary into Trophy. And I was just like, what? Like, it's insane how a small change like that can have such a profound mm -hmm. impact after how the last round went when it looked like DWG would be able to go into this round and clean things up. Instead, we go all the way through to round number 12 between these two teams. We said it would be a mid-table slog, and that is absolutely what it has turned into. That live ranking at the top right of your screen, that shows how close they are to each other here. Uh, you know, they've been able to possibly walk away with a point here, Gus, if they bring it into overtime. And that's when things start to get a little bit tricky on that live ranking leaderboard. So do keep your eye on it if we do go to overtime. But I don't want to get ahead of myself here, Des. We are still on match point here for Damon. We've got to give them the stage here because it's their opportunity to show that, okay, they're not a bottom tier team as a lot of people do like to put that kind of reputation on the CL teams that come into tier one. They go, oh, they've not been in tier one before. They might not do well. I mean, that's, that is a myth that's been disproven time and time again in EU. I'm glad it's also being, you know, solidly being disproven here in APAC North as Damon was one of the favorites coming from CL. I remember we were all very excited about them, and it's literally because we saw what they could do as an org. We've seen what the damn one as an organization provides their other esports teams, how successful they've made certain other teams too. And when we saw this team coming in, again, knowing they played together for a good while, formerly as Spear mm -hmm. Gaming, then GC Boost on Spear, and now finally being picked up by DWG with the addition of Yas from Scars, who had a prolific day one. We oh, were like, yeah. whoa, this could be a real big deal. But now that they're kind of getting sucked into the torrent, the maelstrom that is APAT North, they're starting to find some of these teams are going to start stretching them. And this, again, is where I want to see what they can do in future stages as we move forward. Let's see how this round plays out, though. We are now finally seeing that bandit being brought along. We touched on it earlier on versus the Kaid and the mutant mozzy combo also stepping in. So no Jaeger being brought along. That'd be a risk to you, Jess, bearing in mind there's a Zofia with impacts and frag sat on Yas here. <gasps> Rin, no, they were playing cat and mouse before with this particular hold, and it looks like the defenders, if they wanted to be sneaky here, they wanted to get this happening, they wanted to get a plant down early on. Now that they've made a ruckus on the other side of the map, it means cat oh, Satan has kitchen for free. These smokes, they won't hit early enough, and cat Satan will be able oh. to stick it. But JJ shoots through the smoke, he'll down cat Satan. that is a very, very important kill, because guess what? In a 1v4 situation, in an unwinnable position here for Coded, he might be going but surely this is too much to ask from him here as we are surely propelling ourselves into an overtime between these two middle pack teams. He's channel is in a woogie man here. I think he was going to do anything about this, but it does feel like overtime is the only way that this game is going. They were a fraction of getting that diffuser down, but with nothing left to do in this round, Guts, they managed to swing it back. That overtime, that timeout, sorry, clearly only good for one round. We go to overtime.
the tail of the tape I said wouldn't say if it ended seven and four, I'm glad because I feel with how the rounds have gone in both halves, this game really does deserve an overtime to determine who walks away with the lion's share of points. My only worry here is I said whoever wins today, it would be their make or break. They would make it if you win, you break it if you lost. I actually feel with the teams only getting two points or one point, they're both probably going to mm -hmm. find themselves sat around four or five points here. Again, still in the bottom half of the table. I bet both teams are sitting here thinking, man, this is actually kind of a loss for us both here. I know this is going to be a little bit of a mess for me to explain. So let me try and TLDR it for the viewers here. If Damon walk away with this overtime win, that means they walk away with two points and the Guts will walk away with one. That means that they will both be on four points on the leaderboard. Then as you go down into how this is structured from a rule book perspective, head to head, even though they have the same points, Damon would technically be above Guts. So they would overtake Guts' position on the leaderboard just purely out of a head-to-head -head perspective, even though they're on the same points. I know we've got round differential as well, and that will have to come into it. But if we're talking from a head-to-head -head perspective, technically, Damwon would be a stronger and a higher-tier team on the standing of the leaderboard, and it gets complicated from there. But either way, both teams will walk away with points. Very well needed, as you said, because when you've got Fav above you, the next scoring point of five points that they haven't even played yet today... That's scary. You've got to catch up points really quickly. I, I, only one of these teams will make it into the into the top five. I think mm -hmm. by the end, considering how far we are through this particular stage. And so I think it's a fight between Guts and Down One here. Unless Fav drop the ball all of a sudden um, and and stop putting rounds on the on the board, then or rather uh, points on the board, then maybe Ooh. maybe that's up for grabs. It, it, it's tight. The death said at the very start, this is going to be a tight game. It's hard to call either way. With most of us lent towards saying we think Dan Moore will edge this out, but it was never going to be a clear-cut affair. And it's certainly feeling anything but as we step into a glorified best. Well, it isn't a glorified. It literally is a best of three with these final three rounds to see who walks away the victor. It is good starting off on the defense. So a bit of a switcheroo. For at least down one, I think attacking in from the north side here. Again, the split pressure was something we kind of this is much criticized for. But if you recall on this site last time, they started out towards the north side, started moving their way down. Very late round, then rotated down to the south. And JJ was there to greet them, killed the two players pushing in, and there was no time to go for the execute. So space, so space here is going to be so important. Get this wall open, rotate your crucial members down to the south, and then think about when you're going to go for your execute without being caught out by someone like JJ. Oh, that drone is feeding so much intel over towards Dam One now. Cat saying is the one on it. He is the pilot for that drone that is yellow pinging Yura. That yellow ping won't be indicating to Yura that he is being spotted, but he does make his way over towards China. That's where Rin's ingress is going to be, and that's another freebie. Rin did this last time. He was trying to get that C4 dead from below. She, well, he manages to get it again and walk through as being the one that gets that entry kill that Dam One need. My problem is that sometimes they don't always convert that into a round win even uh -huh. though statistically teams who do get the opening kill do have what is it a 70 percent extra chance of winning the round that's usually quite huge i'd love to hear ace's stats on this one actually no based on the entry kills how many rounds then went on to be won because we've commented mm -hmm. constantly on how there's always a kind of a flurry of three or four kills in the early to mid round and then it turns into kind of a total round reset in a three versus three it's very wild yeah. but the disruption game has been very very impactful i think here for both teams here we're about 50 seconds okay. remaining or so, but only one being dead. It's quite a peaceful start. Grenade coming oh. in not to the right spot entirely. Doesn't actually kill Lily out or Light. Both sat behind shields. That could be a massive thorn in the side of DWG come execute time. I realize it must have got stuck on the brick wall and it didn't have the explosive radius that oh, Yas was looking for. No, that was a concussion that unfortunately made Yas question themselves and step on back. Explosion radius will catch himself rather than the intended player in shield. Crazy Papio knows where that Gemini came from, that the player must also be down below as well. We saw down one attempt to try and make that ingress from bottom of basement and bring it up Astro stairs, but with 13 seconds left, Des, they don't have time. Oh, that's where she went out on the frag here as well. Five versus three. They've got to push now. Five versus two. Who can play hero on the other side? The answer apparently is no one. They can't stop anything. It's a flawless round coming out of down one. And I thought surely someone somewhere on Guts is able to play spoiler, but unfortunately not. That's the first flawless round I believe we've seen on the entire map. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to be a huge confidence booster here for Dam1. They haven't been able to have such a convincing round, especially on attack, for the entire stats that I'm going through here for Villa. 
If you go through all of their stats, they've always had close rounds, especially on attack. But to go into overtime and absolutely clap it to Guts, I think Guts themselves are going to be sitting there going, oh, yeesh, we are going to have to put on the best attacking round now that they're going to be flowing that momentum into this uh. last round or possible last round. And they've got the pulse to work with here. Cat says 13 kills. So is, uh, I believe, coded alongside him. Some good frags on the board. Uh, I, was, oh, I really wanted to stay. I thought it was going to be a Hail Mary all or nothing Ying play, but no, they swapped it out. Big sad. Oh, they swapped the pulse too. Yeah, big sad. Big sad. Big sad. I really wanted to see the Ying come in for the execute there and just be like, right, guys, Hail Mary, all or nothing. We go for this with the Ying and see what comes out of it. But no, going back to ye old faithful, we saw them running most of the map playing with the Jackal and the Nomad. We did touch on the other side of Dan one running the Iana and the Nomad a lot. Again, small side of the differences, same sort of job. Take ground, look to stop the Romans being able to retake it with the air jabs, press on forwards. I am a little bit worried here for Guts because what Dan one have been able to achieve on this side, especially when you get down to the support players or the flex support players like Coded behind a Vulcan shield next to Maps, he has been unstoppable in that position. I think there's a lot of players that are quite confident on Dan one holding this site. It is a very popular site. And if I go over to look at their stats, especially on this map as a whole, and it shows that when they play Villa, that they uh, this is their most played site by far. In fact, before mm. this game even occurred, they played it like 16 or 17 times over, and that's in the past few months. Yeah. I'm not really surprised. It comes out as the most popular site on this map. Trophy and Statue was for kind of a while number two, and then we had Dining mm -hmm. and Kitchen coming up as number three. But then some teams, I think it was some teams in last time, actually stopped playing Trophy and Statue altogether, just thinking it was a weak site. Mm. So EVG always kind of reigns supreme, and then the downside, downstairs sites kind of started to creep into play. Some teams in NA started playing the south side sites, the side of Library, for example. It is one of those maps where ABG feels like the only solidly consistent site across all regions. Oh, Rin. Sometimes I do criticize Rin for being overly aggressive in a highly fortified position. Unnecessarily so. Like, maybe use that aggression once everything's been wasted. Don't don't try and get anything early on because that, that to me, screams wasted ADSs, wasted Banshees, wasted Magnets as well. They've brought Yas back onto the Wamai and they want to fortify Rin's position here. Don't throw it away. Hold on to it for as long as you can. And I think that Mute Jam has been dispatched of. I'm not sure if there's another one on Wolf Wall, but that's what they've been waiting for. If you're wondering why there's been a delay, that Selma was stuck on a Mute Jammer for a little bit there. And as a result, Rin is only now going to be pressured from top and bottom and be Woogie Man to hold the cross from 90. Oh, okay. Another one of those slow rounds where although there's a little, there's a few shots being fired, but none really connecting. No kill shots being fired, dare I say. More a back off. I'm holding this spot. Rin playing where we saw them playing so many times over so far. And he's had a, a mixed game. The occasional opening yeah. kill coming through, for example, but looking at the score here, 8 and 12 as well. Mixed impact no. and almost getting domed out there, but Light somehow comes out worse for wear in that trade, down to about 30 HP. No. Yura will bring down Katzang. That's the kill that Guts are looking for to keep the advantage going for them here. Will there be a repeak of the Red Stairs? Answer is no. That is a whip Hello. and a half for Kat saying who has Hello. had the most impact for Dan one here. Unfortunately, isn't able to connect the shots that were also necessary onto light. Fortunately, Rin doesn't realize that they're in the radius of the grenade will go down as well. We've seen rounds where Damon and both Guts as well in the defense can collect a man disadvantage here and a multiple man disadvantage at that. And with 30 seconds left, Coden in a Ooh. beautiful position to stop this and possibly they could rotate Ooh. a C4 down below and Woogie Man, they can still make this happen, Des. It makes me so nervous. Remember round one when Coates got the 3k from this near enough close angle. I hope Guts remember and that they've learned from it and they're going to do something different here. But actually, Coates is the one to do something different. Pops out the Goyo shield and then steps back into the vault. Now they're relying on the time being a thing. There's five seconds remaining here. Utilities coming in. Platform's going now, but Yas gets the gun down on the long angle inside of Sunny. Turns around and takes the other one coming out the other side. They have absolutely cleaned up and down one. They push Guts back once again. Aviator is their kingdom. And the eight and six score line it may only be two points but it's a much needed two points that will keep them in the game a little longer 
I said it didn't matter if they were down two men on the leaderboard. They were rather on the scoreboard because they were able to put it together. I think Coded popping that Vulcan shield was the absolute right call. And as a result, the cross ride from Study. We criticize teams all the time for not having Study control on their attack. And you're going to get absolutely bit in the butt for it. And unfortunately for Guts, oh so close, yet not close enough. They will get a point, however. This does tie down one and Guts in points. However, I'm not sure how the round differential will be looking. So do make sure you check out CGG or Liquipedia to see where that does put them at the end of the day. It was a tight one. And you mentioned about study. They did try and take it, but Yas is just too good. Gun down the mm -hmm. guy going for the plant. Turn around and killed the guy coming into study door. Made it look all too easy. Down one with some impressive rounds, but Guts put up a pretty good show as well. We'll give him that. That's why it went all the way through to overtime. Let's go to the desk and see what they thought of this matchup. All the way to overtime it did go. Victorious.